The story starts on a massive airplane-like machine, which is also like a sword. An air hostess hands a drink to a passenger who gratefully collects the drink and then looks out the window. The plane is powered by magic. The next scene shows a city. The year is 4386, and it is the great era of scientific cultivation. Different characters play sports and do normal activities with more advanced technology, and there seems to be peace everywhere. Suddenly, there's a large lightning strike, and the clouds become black. A massive frog-like creature falls from the sky and uses its powers to destroy the city. At the other edge, as people run around, scared a young boy casually works in a store. At the store, on the TV, the news is being reported. The reporter is saying that a level 5 giant frog has descended in Songhai. The store manager is just going on about his day casually also. He seems like a half, human half matching creature, with a TV for a head. Back at the battle scene, a group of mages have been deployed to handle the situation. The mages use their diverse powers on the creature, causing a massive explosion but the creature is not moved. It kills one of them with a blast. One of the mages notices the young boy from earlier. He is done from the store and casually walking down the street near the creature. He calls out to the boy, but he does not respond. The man, Zhou Li, carries the boy away. Then it seems he uses his power to defeat the creature. Zhou Li had a statue constructed in his honor, and future generations will know him as the hero who saved Huax Yu. Many factions have a statue in his honor. On the first day of school returning to Faction 60, a young man is being bullied by two students. Someone tries to save him but he's stopped. The bullies are sent flying by Sun Rong, the legendary daughter of the Flower Fruit Water Curtain group. Everyone is surprised by her abilities. She comes down from where she is standing to meet the bullies but they run away. Rong then offers her hands to the bullied boy, as the rest of the students watch, in anticipation but rather anticlimactically. The boy hands her money, then walks away, telling her he is thankful for the protection. This shocks everyone, and leaves Rong speechless and confused. In the school, the students are welcomed by a hologram, which tells them they will be graded on a spiritual test that will determine their class. The hologram then welcomes them on behalf of the Magic Committee of Huak Shu. The first student is called in for the test, Ku Xuan. As the student enters the test area, he sees a hologram giant frog and is scared. A sign shows on the top of it saying, Hit here! The other students watch in anticipation. Zhuan stands up, dusts himself, then hits the creature and throws him away. He is rated as ordinary. Most of the students enter the ordinary class, and a few enter into the elite class. At the bottom of the school, the demon king thinks to himself. He explains that he has been using the frog-like hologram to absorb the powers of students over the years. The next student is called in, wrong. The Demon King waits in anticipation because he needs just a little more power to break the seal. Before now the highest ranking was 938 for force, Rong enters the class and then hits the demon, she is called a goddess, and her rating is 2019. After her, the boy she saved earlier enters the test room. He seems weak to the others but the Demon King becomes scared of seeing him. There is a flashback to the previous battle. The frog easily took care of Zhou Li. Then as it wanted to end his life, the young boy saved by Zhou Li walks up to the creature, then kicks it. The kick knocks out the creature. Then the boy picks up his snacks in apathy. For some reason the boy even has his background music. The boy runs to the hologram, reduces his power to the minimum, then hits it. Yet the force breaks the performance measurer. The hologram falls in defeat because of the force. The other students watch, surprised by the power behind the hit. The other students feel there must be some kind of ploy behind the hit, and the boy Wang Ling is taken to the elite classroom. There he listens to lectures with his fellow students on how magic works and the methods of incantation of magic beasts. The teacher astounds the students with her powers. After teaching the students, she tells each of them to summon a creature. The first person tries to summon his creature. He is a guy but summons a feminine wand. The next person summons a skirt. Sun Rong can summon a creature, but it is small like a puppy. She feels bad because she wonders what kind of power it takes to summon a spiritual beast. The teacher asks Wang Ling to do his summoning, but he is hesitant. She offers to teach him again so she can see the creature. Wang Ling tries to suppress his power, so much so that just a drop of energy comes out of him but still, it is so powerful that it summons the giant frog. All the other students begin to run away, while the giant frog is shocked and is still trying to understand its current situation when the teacher attacks it, but it transforms into a cute dog. The students rush to the dog to pet it, but the teacher watches from behind shocked at what just occurred. Wang Ling casually walks away from the situation. He leaves the class as the teacher watches him. The first scene is at a hospital. A nurse rushes out of the emergency room that is filled with smoke, and she sees Wang's father who is worried for his pregnant wife. The nurse tells him that his child crawled out by himself. Wang's dad watches in shock as the child casually walks up to him from the delivery room. 
He faints. At home, he tries to buy gifts for Wong, but Wong is apathetic. He is the chosen one who will save the world. Wong's father saved a lot of money to buy the gift, but his wife used her skills to buy the perfect counterfeit for him so he won't notice and their money won't be wasted. Mr. Wong hands the sword to the baby, but the spiritual force in his fingertips is too much. It breaks immediately. Wong feels troubled because he does not want his parents' marriage to break, so he starts to keep a low profile. But at age 6, he did not keep to this, and that's when he defeated the giant frog. The family watched when he did this. Then all of them went to a secluded area where they decided to keep a low profile, and Wong's dad searched online for different methods to contain spiritual force. He implements it before his son goes to school. Wang takes drugs every day to contain his magic but still, it can only go so far. His parents argue and talk about how at different times in his life, his power has shown itself at different times. Wong because of this, decides to keep a low profile. Back at the school, it's election season, and the students want Rong to be president. Wong goes to the canteen to buy some food, then a man purchases everything, and he tells everyone there that if they vote for Sun Rong, everything is free. The other boys walk away. Sun Rong comes from behind smiling while the guys say she is using her money for votes through gifts. She uses her skills to calm them down and then explains how she is just showing the class how capable she is. The boys are charmed by her skills and communication, but one of them decides to stand against it. Wong is apathetic. He decides to take five noodles for five votes. Rong says that it does not matter if you vote for her or not, but the free food is here for everyone. The rest of her classmates rush behind Wang, while Chen Chao remains unwavering in his ideals. His friend tells him that he misunderstands Sun Rong, but Chao doesn't give in. Sun Rong stares at the ballot box, where it says, Vote for Sun Run, everything is free, and explains how it is different from saying that everything is free, regardless of whether you vote for her or not. He feels that you don't have to make things obvious, but Sun Rong did it to garner more votes. The rest of the classmates buy food and Chao uses her magic to seduce most of her classmates to take some snacks and vote for her. It even works on Chao. Afterwards Sun Rong looks for Wang, who she feels is the reason for the turnaround in attitude by her classmates. She searches but cannot find him. The man in the store notices her looking anxious and then asks what she is searching for, Rong tells him. The man explains that Wang left a while back but he handed a gold drug to the man. Wong felt bad that he could only have one vote, despite taking five noodles, so he thinks he owes Sun Rong a favor. Sun Rong likes the gift. While this is going on, Wong is casually strolling through the school halls, enjoying his dry noodles. Wong gave Sun Rong the gold pill his mom forced him to take to make the scores even. The students have their next class. The class is boring. Then the teacher decides to teach seduction magic, the one used by Sun Rong earlier, and how to dispel it. Sun Rong feels like the teacher has seen through her magic and is playing mind games with her. The teacher explains the history of seduction magic, the way a king used it over a thousand years ago, and that the precondition for it to happen is for the caster to give gifts to the people the person intends to seduce. Wong listens. He now understands why Rong did those things earlier but he's thankful because he handed a gift back to her, so he is not under her spell. Rong tries to hide her scared face from Wang, but he notices her demeanor. One of the classmates asks if there's a way to break the spell, and the teacher says, great men with power can overcome the magic. Wang tries to use hand signals to tell Rong thank you for the noodles, but she misunderstands his hand signals. She thinks it is him telling her to take the gift earlier. She then puts it in her mouth not knowing it's a pill to lower power levels. After taking the pill, her magic power disappears and she becomes weak. The teacher calls her to the front of the class so she can use her powers, but she slips on a can. She almost falls, but Wong catches her. The teacher tells Wong and the rest of the class to do the magic skill. Afterward, Chen Chao and Rong are voted in as class leaders. After the class, the other students congratulate Chen, then, as Wong walks by he sees her talking with some men she hired. At home, Rong is doing some assignments. She sighs and then wonders why Wang betrayed her after supporting her earlier. She is conflicted. Earlier, the teacher watched as his students left the school. He was impressed by Wang's abilities and how quickly he mastered seduction magic after just hearing it once. At the school students troop in, while on the school building's roof, the demon frog, now in the shape of a cute dog, watches and wags its tail. Students bring their materials for making vitality pills. Chen Chao plans to use his fine cauldron to seduce Rong. As the other students troop in, a limo arrives. Then, an orchestra begins to play. Rong comes out of the car, she only has eyes for Wang, and she ignores Chen Chao, who's vying for her attention. Rong calls out to Wang, who notices that he mistakenly seduced her the previous day with his magic ability. Wang sighs, and then dispels the magic from Rong's head. Rong comes back to her senses, while Wang walks away. 
In the class, the students are taught how to make basic vitality pills. The teacher shows them how to do it and asks them to keep up. First, they get a pot, then use various materials and mechanisms to do it. The teacher is too quick, and most of the students are unable to keep up. After her explanation, she tells the students to do them, then they get busy. Using their furnaces, each student decides to make the pills. Everyone is using fine materials, but Wong uses a microwave. Chen's cauldron explodes because of his exuberance. The teacher then tells the class that in seven hours, they will return to check if the pills have been made, and the class departs. After they leave, the Demon King makes its way to Gua Hao's cauldron, which turns out to be a spiritual pet he salivates at the prospect, and he explains how he gradually evolved in the past eating spirit animals to make himself the Demon King. Immediately the lights are switched on, and Wang tells the Demon Lord that he suspected this will happen. He goes on to beat up the Demon Lord before throwing him out of the class. At the track within the school, Chow is running laps around the track because he is upset, as he has destroyed the family cauldron after begging and promising his dad that he will use it carefully and successfully. Chow is scared of what will happen once he returns home. After beating up the demon lord, Wong goes to the bathroom to clean Guo's cauldron, which was covered in the demon king's slobber. As he exits the bathroom, he runs into Guo. Guo misreads the situation thinking Wong was trying to mess with him and destroy the cauldron. He asks Wong to hand it over, then points a magic gun at Wong, telling him to explain himself. At the track, Chao is now exhausted from running around. He has a painful thought of Rong ignoring him because of Wang. Then, everyone laughs at him while he sees himself stuck in a cage, as his classmates repeatedly call him King Explosion. This imagination cripples Chao and allows his mind to be with madness. As this was going on, at the front of the bathroom, Wang tries to explain the situation to Guo, but the situation sounds too preposterous for Guo to believe. Guo fires a squirt from the magic gun, but Wang dodges it. Behind him though Chao was running up the stairs, and the squirt hits him directly in his mouth. This knocks out Chao. Guo screams in fear of what he has done. When Wang tries to resuscitate Chao, Guo stops him, then both of them carry Chao into the class where no one is. There Guo explains the content of the squirt, and how Chao could be in grave danger in a few hours if nothing is done. Wang tries to tell Guo that he can sort the situation out easily, but Guo cuts him off. Wang allows Guo to do what he desires, which is to make an antidote using magic. Wang gets the required materials, then Guo sets the heat. Guo realizes that the time frame is too long to create the antidote, because the teacher and their classmates will return soon. As he ponders on what to do, he sees the demon lord trying to attack his cauldron. Then he uses magic to hit it. The demon lord fires a blast at the cauldron before it faints. Guo runs to check on his furnace which is not glowing brightly from the heat earlier. The cauldron is working faster than before, so the boys tie the demon king and use its blast to speed up the process. They learn from the Demon King that his spiritual force is a timeline. Hence with enough power he can speed up or reverse timelines if necessary. The boys go on firing the Demon King with blasts enough to make the pill ready on time. Then test the antidote on the Demon King. Afterward, they hear the footsteps of their classmates. Then Guo tells Wang to handle the situation while he distracts the class from entering. Guo rushes out the door and then tries using diverse means to distract the teacher and his classmates but it only works for a few seconds before the class enters. Then the teacher checks each person's golden pill. Wang exchanged his pill with Guo, so Guo gets an 85. Guo is grateful to Wang, but he's surprised that Wang could use a microwave oven to make such a perfect pill. Guo is wrong though, as his pill had been in the cauldron the entire time. Wang did nothing at all. His microwave failed, while Chao was just asleep in his cauldron. When Chao comes to, he is in a field with Chao and Wang beside him. He looks around surprised. Then they tell him that they've fixed his cauldron. He looks back and sees it good as new. Then he starts to cry tears of joy. He hugs Guo then apologizes to Wang before giving him his hug. The camera pans to the sky where what seems like the ghost of the demon lord in his dog form is smiling. The first scene is an amazing sight of fireworks at a fair. Wang stares at the fireworks while Rong stares at him. She exclaims that the fireworks look beautiful while Wang continues to look up in silence. The next scene is in the class. The teenager's hormones are going out of control as the atmosphere is filled with desire. Rong walks up to the unassuming Wang. She sizes him up like a predator watching her prey. At this time, a bunch of people in masks look into Wang's class. They are using binoculars and have a sniper which is targeted towards Rong. Rong is unaware of this. She smiles and squints as she asks Wang out on a date scheduled the next day. Her direct approach surprises Wang, but Rong is unaware that she is also her target herself. 
From afar, the men confirm that she can be killed with one shot and when ordered by a woman in a room, they try to fire, but Wong notices the sniper man and sends a massive unknown presence which incapacitated him. Wong's attention is called back to Rong, who now screams that he should date her. The class is shocked by her outburst, while Chao cries and is comforted by Guo. Before he can speak, Wong is summoned by the class teacher. He rushes to meet him as Rong watches and smiles. The men sent to assassinate Rong have lost her now, then they move to the next sniping point as ordered by the boss. The Demon King watches as all this unfolds. The teacher leads Wong away while Rong follows behind him. She misread what happened earlier because Wong answered yes when the teacher called him. As Rong walks through the school smiling sheepishly, students take plenty of pictures of her, while Wong is unaware that this minor situation is the beginning of a love story. At the school's official site, many images are uploaded by students who are rooting for Wong and Rong to be a couple. Wong is taken to the principal's office, where he meets Zhou Li the famed hero. Zhou asks Wong if he is the kid that defeated the Demon King years back. Wong tries to deny it, but Zhou knows it is him. Immediately, Zhou calls Wong his master, telling him he has been searching for him for a long while since he saw his power. Wong uses his magic powers to make Zhou forget about this, but reduces his power by half to make sure it does not hurt Zhou. Wong walks back to the class where the Demon King tells him about the assassins trying to kill Rong. The next day, Wong has a dream, where Rong is constantly disturbing him. He wakes up, and then opens the blinds of his room to see some limousines with Rong calling him in front of them. Wong closes the blinds, and then heads downstairs to meet his parents. His dad and mom encourage him to quickly prepare for the date. This surprised Wong who thought his parents would be against it. Instead, everyone is excited at the prospect of him dating Rong. Wong goes online and several posts have been made encouraging him and wishing him the best with Rong. Then his parents show him some high-end nutrition pills they received from Rong's parents and they push him out of the house for the date. Wong enters the limousine Rong is in, he secretly wishes the killers mentioned by the Demon King show up, and the limousines leave. On the way, Rong tells Wong where they are headed. She seems excited. The place is called Heavenly Paradise. It was constructed by her parents and built for her only. She just wished to be here with the person she loved. Wong watches as they arrive and they are greeted by Rong's men. Unknowing to the two children the assassins have made their way into heavenly paradise, Rong leads Wang away excitedly when some bullets are fired towards them. Wang uses his teeth to catch the bullets and then fires it back at the assassins. He then uses magic to wipe Rong's memory of what happened. Throughout the day, Wang continues to foil the attempts of the assassins, but keeps on using memory wipe to remove the memory of everyone. At the end of the day, Wang and Rong climb the Ferris wheel, Wong hopes that he will have some peace at the top, but the assassins follow not too far away. Zhou notices this, and then informs people that there are killers on the Ferris wheel. As Wong and Rong look towards each other, fireworks begin to paint the sky beautifully in an eruption of multiple colors. This distracts Wong for a moment, but he does not notice till it's too late and the assassins are holding guns at point-blank range. The assassins enter Wang's ride, and then sit down on the opposite side of the two kids constantly holding a gun to their heads. Rong asks who they are and what they want, while Wang remains apathetic. Rong learns that the two guys are from the Shadow Faction, then she asks them to leave Wang alone and kill only her since she is their target. The two men laugh. They tell Rong that they do not kill people who are not their target. Rong, although scared and crying, tries to hold herself to protect Wang. This action spurs Wang who uses his powers to quickly get rid of the two men. His immense power causes a burst of beautiful eruptions in the sky which illuminate the night. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel, Zhou sees this and laughs and calls it the mercy of God. At the top, Wang tells Rong to please keep his immense power a secret. She promises not to tell anyone then both of them to stare into the night. Rong smiles with joy while Wang looks up, quietly taking in the spectacular scenery. At the Shadow Faction headquarters, many assassins wear rabbit masks as they are given a brief by their leader. She informs everyone that her client is unhappy because Rong is still alive and perfectly fine. She says that her men were blasted into smithereens by someone nobody knows, and this astounds her. She walks around to one of the men who is sweating anxiously. He tries to explain that Rong is walking around with a man who is rumored to be very powerful, protecting her. While he speaks, his boss points a finger at him, then she kills him. She explains that over the last century, the Shadow Faction has had a 100% success rate in their mission. So, this is a shame to them. The boss issues a Shadow Kill order. 
the men try to explain why it's too much but stop themselves as soon as they see her red glaring eyes looking angrily at them. At school, the assassins are using flies to spy on Rong, Wong is walking into the classroom when Rong runs to him, Guo congratulates Wong, then asks if he has done anything wrong because he's been surrounded by her guards. One of the group's teachers, instructor Wang Zukang, walks up to them, he tells Rong that the assassins that attacked yesterday are still after her life. But Rong pretends, like she did not see any assassins because of her promise to Wang. Zhu walks to meet the group, then he tells Rong that she did not see any assassin because he was able to apprehend them before they came in contact with the children. This plane was made by Wang last night to make it seem like Zhou solved the problem. Zhou brings out the Shadow Kill Order, which was brought out by the Shadow Kill faction. It is rumored that whoever receives one does not live to see the sundown of the next day. Afterward, Zhou sets different army men and people in place to protect Rong. The group enters the school where they meet bodyguards who are all golden pill face or above in ranking. Rong's father pulls off all the stops to hire them for his daughter's protection. Zhou takes them to instructor Wang's office and instructs them to stay there. The office is protected by a force field put up by Zhou. Even a fly is unable to enter the room unscathed. One fly enters but is immediately killed by a member of the Seven Star Squad, a group of snipers with impeccable levels of accuracy. They are stationed in a helicopter for surveillance and protection. Instructor Wang says this is the highest level of security that has been done in the school, but the shadow leader laughs because they already have individuals stationed to infiltrate the school. Immediately, a member of the shadow faction clears the yard. He uses his skills to quickly get rid of the men sent to protect Rong. Instructor Wang sees all this in the cameras and then tries to encourage the students but turns to see them apathetic and scrolling through social media on their phones. News of Rong and Wang's date the previous day is going around. The group is excited and continues to text each other. Chow and Rong offer to protect Wang, just outside in the halls. The second member of the Shadow Faction uses his power to get rid of all the bodyguards sent. As he walks down, an attack is fired at him by Zukong, but he dodges it. At the top of the classroom, the number one member of the team is using his magic power to hide as he builds up the force to smash through the barrier. At the office, Wong is excited because he has received a notification about some noodles being sent to him. Then the crew watches as Zhu Kang fights off the number two member of the shadow team. Zhu Kang destroys the weapon sent by the number two member. Number two tries to escape, but runs into the door when Wong is walking to get the noodles. When number two comes to, he is beaten up by Zhu Kang, and his screams are heard by number one, who now understands that his brother has been defeated. Number one is worried for number three, but number three tells him there is no need to worry, as he casually defeats the guards stationed in the yard. Number three sees a cute puppy not knowing it's the Demon King. He begins to pet it. The Demon King tricks him, and then sucks out his spiritual force and life force. Afterward, the Demon King transforms into his frog form, and then blasts Number 2 to smithereens. Number 1 sees all this happen, but he is stills okay, because of his invisibility power. Wong climbs up to pick up his package. Number 1 is scared but is still confident since no one can see him. But Wong informs Number 1 that he can see through his ability. Wong then tells him to stop since the assassination has been stopped. The fact that Wong can see through his ability makes Number 1 angry. He then uses it to attack Wong with all his built-up power. Yet even with all of Number 1's accumulated power, the difference and power levels is too much for him, it is just like an egg smashed into a rock. It does not affect Wong in any way. Number one then faints in shock. After using his ability to no gain, all the assassins have now been dealt with. The boss sees this information on a television and then tries to break the TV, but she is stopped by her underlings. Back at the school top, Zhou climbs upstairs to see Wang dragging number one. He calls Wang master, but once again, Wang uses his magic to make Zhou forget about this. He instructs Zhou to think that he defeated number one himself. The assassins are escorted away, and Wang pretends to be hurt by number one's attack when his classmates climb to see him. Wang Ling lays face up in the private healing cabin constructed by Sun Rong and continues to stare at the ceiling boards. His mission to play sick is still on. His mother comes into the room with his breakfast and she carefully sets it on his lap. She asks him how long he is going to play sick and points out to him that it has been more than 10 days since he started the act. She further urges him to let everyone know the next day that he has recovered and also to go back to school. Just then, there is a knock on the door and his father, Wang Ying, goes to open it. He announces aloud to Wang Ling that it is his friends who are there to visit him. Wang Ling is surprised and he immediately lays back in his healing cabin and waits as they are ushered in. They all enter the room and exchange pleasantries with Mrs. Wang, and one of them says they are visiting on behalf of the school. They present flowers, but Mrs. Wang insists that they didn't have to go through the stress of buying them. 
She leaves the room, and Wang Ling's friends turn their attention back to him. They ask if he is feeling better, but he does not respond. One of them, who has a parrot on his shoulder, tells Wang Ling that the bird is his pet, Birdie too. The parrot flies away from his shoulders, lands on Wang Ling's healing cabin, and repeatedly says the word, Kamel. Wang Ling is not at all impressed and wonders why his friend would have such an ugly bird as a pet, but still does not utter a word. One of the females among them thinks the bird is adorable, and the other agrees, and further says it looks like Wang Ling, who instantly makes a face without saying anything. Mrs. Wang comes back into the room with a tray containing snacks and tea. Sun Rong presents a box to Mrs. Wang saying it contains the ultimate elixirs produced by her family's group. She further adds that Mrs. Wang could have them all and that they would help Wang Ling recover. The other female presents nutrition pills and a chicken blood tonic injection also saying it would help Wang Ling recover fully. Wang Ling's mother accepts the gifts and then heads out of the room, telling Wang Ling to treat his guests well. Sun Rong then walks to the healing cabin where Wang Ling lies and calmly asks if he is feeling better, adding that she is so worried, and this time, he responds in a rather shaky voice saying to her that he feels much better. She then proceeds to bring out the chicken blood tonic injection, and another friend of his who came along brings out the spiritual power infusion, which was given to them by Wang Zukong. Wang Ling does not want any of it, so he immediately jumps out of the healing cabin, snatches the spiritual power infusion which his friend held, and also announces to them that he is okay, and will be returning to school in two days. He sits with them at the table as they try to see their powers by creating their power sphere, which is collected by a wristband all the students wear and recorded by a system as they look to see whose powers are strongest. The students all test their powers from their respective locations as the wristband that they all wear aids them to get their scores collected remotely. So far, Tang Jingzi tops the list as he breaks the record set by Master Zhuo Yi 10 years ago, scoring 300 more points. Sun Rong also does hers, and has a pretty high score of 40-15, and is in second place. Her score leaves the others stunned. It is Wang Ling's turn, and he conjures his power sphere which is too powerful, even for the system to calculate. The system records his score as null, and keeps him at number 1. The students are shocked. Tang Jingzi believes the system has a bug, and the operator decides to check it to find out. Wang Ling's friends are leaving, and as he sees them off, one of them says he is going to hack into the system so he would alter his score as it is ridiculously low. Chen Chao urges him not to do so, but should still act honorably, even if he scores zero points. Meanwhile, the operator is still trying to figure out what the issue is. She is asked by Tang Jingzi if Wang Ling's score is normal, and she responds by saying she does not know, as the system ranks him at the top, but his score data cannot be retrieved. She further explains to him what might have happened since the ranking module of the system was written with the most primitive polarity code. Elsewhere, Wang Ling asks his friend to help hack into the system and change its score to a much lower one after a series of processes and frustrating moments. He can get the password, and after changing Wang Ling's score, he proceeds to make some other major changes, which the other operator notices and gets concerned that he might get all of them caught and expelled from the school. Just as she suspected, Wang Ling's friend triggers the alarm on the system, and he immediately logs out of the server, just before getting caught. Wang Ling is still worried, and he asks if he left any trace on the server, but his friend is confident, saying he is an expert, and the situation is under control. Wang Ling's score remains unchanged, and back at the school where Tang Jingzi and the female operator are viewing, they are still disappointed, but they believe that at the sword competition, which is to hold the next month, they will meet the students who had those high scores, and then, they will find out how powerful those students are. Wang Zukong informs Ms. Pan that the results of the senior phase school power test results are announced, and Wang Ling comes out on top. She, like the other students, is also surprised and asks Wang Zukong if there is a problem with the system. She further adds that Wang Ling is a little below average in the class and is usually very quiet, and because of that, it is somewhat impossible that he would be ranked first nationally. Wang Zukong does not give a direct answer to Ms. Pan's question, but instead, he informs her that another student, Sun Rong, also entered the top 10 list, increasing the average score. Wang Zukong's calmness as he delivers the information surprises Ms. Pan, and she asks to know why he is all calm about the sudden change which is rather strange and disturbing to her. She also asks him about Tang, who is in second place. It is the National Senior Phase Sword Competition and the different fighters show their skills at the training field of Songhai Faction 59. 
Tang, the student union chairman, also performs his sword skills, and afterwards, as he is stepping out, an interviewer stops him to ask some questions. She asks him about his preparations for the competition, and he responds by saying that the students have all undergone intense training for about a month, and that the training happens repeatedly to ensure that they give out their best as they participate in the competition. He further adds that the high-level students who are about to graduate are looking forward to their last major battle, and that the vigorous spirit of Faction 59 will be passed down to the new students. The interviewer asks if he has anything to say to their rivals, students from Songhai's Faction 60, and he responds by saying that he acknowledges the abilities of Sunrong as she scored high in the power show test and looks forward to seeing her family's remarkable powers at the sword competition. The interviewer chips in with another question, and this time, she asks him about Wang Ling, who scored the highest, and he simply responds, saying that he wishes him the best in his practice. Tong Jingzi then walks away as he does not want to answer any more questions. Ms. Pan is still concerned about the participants in the sword competition, and again asks Wang Zukong if all the participants are freshmen in level 1. Zhuo Li is in the same room, and he interrupts saying that the school does not have quality enrollments and he doesn't see a force level higher than a thousand among the higher levels. She acknowledges the fact that, despite Soon Rong being a level 1 student, she is a genius but she doubts the abilities of the other three. Zhuo Li gives her a heavy pat on her shoulder and says he believes in the quality of her teaching. She then turns to Wang Zukong and informs him of the requirements for the competition, which is a team of five students, but at the moment, they have only four. Master Zhuo Li cuts in and introduces her to the fifth participant, a dog. She screams in shock and expresses disappointment, but he asks her not to discriminate against a spiritual beast, as there are precedents for animals in the competition, reminding her that the team that won the championship in 3497 from a senior phase school had a fox as a member of their team. Pan argues that the case was different because the fox was an exchange student from the spiritual world and she transformed into a human whenever it was necessary. Master Zhuo asks her to be calm, as the dog can also transform into a human with his transformation, trick which he performs on the dog and it transforms but looks weird. Pan is not still convinced, and further adds that the dog did not take part in the power test, and because of that, it is not qualified to participate. Wang Zukong then goes ahead to perform a makeup power test on the dog, and to everyone's greatest surprise, it scores 5,000 points and takes the second position from Tang Jingzi. As they have done all of these, Ms. Pan has no other choice but to agree with the plan. At the Songhai Faction Cultivation School, the students are done for the day and are heading out. Sun Rong walks out with Wang Ling, Chen Chao, and Guo Hao. Moments later, her ride arrives, and she leaves. The trio is now walking down the road as Guo Hao talks about a video game he recently bought. They have all gotten back to their apartments, and a few hours later, five of them, Wang Ling, Chen Chao, Guo Hao, Sun Rong, and the dog, Froggy 2 are called upon by Wang Zukong and informed about the National Senior Phase Sword Competition, which they have been selected to participate in. He urges them to get their spiritual sword ready within three days, and they all get to it. In the group to which they were all added, they show off their swords as they explain how they got their respective swords. Sun Rong's sword impresses them all, as its blue color is the corona of the sword spirit. Wang Zukong notes that she has produced a sword spirit and applauds her for it. She is praised even more by other tutors who say she has spent a lot of effort to foster a mutual understanding. Sun Rong then tells them that her family forged 13 of those swords, in case it gets damaged in battle. Froggy 2 surprises them all, as he also shows his spiritual sword. Wang Zukong then tells them more about how to create a spiritual sword, adding that they will be taught more about spiritual swords in the next semester. Wang Ling hasn't presented his sword yet, and they notice and ask why. He only says that he has a spiritual sword, but does not show it to them. At Tong Jingzi's camp, he presents a list of four members to Miss G, and when asked why, he says there is a fifth member. On hearing about who it is, Miss G is a bit furious and asks if he is ready to face the consequences of adding the fifth person to the competition. Tang stresses that they must win against Faction 60, and to do that, they'll need the services of the stranger he is going to add. Wang Ling does not want to take part in the National Senior Phase Sword competition, because he believes that if he shows his true power at the competition, it will cause panic. Wang Ling contemplates if he should go ahead and show off his sword. His parents watch the news as there is a report of an explosion at the Spiritual Force chemical plant. In another news story, it is reported that the Cultivation Council's armored cruise troops surrounded the Shadow Faction's headquarters building earlier in the day, and a lot of chaos was caused in the process. A reporter from the scene reports that the lower levels of the building have been cleared, and that resistance is only on the upper levels. 
Just then Master Zhuo arrives at the scene and several reporters run up to him to ask questions regarding the issue. He says to them that he had encounters with Shadow Faction in the past and he foiled their plans each time. He added that this time would not be an exception as he goes ahead to address the leader of the Shadow Faction and says he looks forward to meeting him or her again. Wang Ling interrupts his parents and asks to know about his sword. He is shown where it is and moments after, he receives a message from Wang Zukong and he is informed about the team's trip to Faction 59 to familiarize themselves with the venue. They all meet the next day and the other members of the team are shocked to see that Wang Ling's sword is very small. Sun Rong still thinks his sword is nice, and so does the dog. Master Zhuo, Wang Zukong, and Miss Pan also meet up with them. Master Zhuo asks if they are all ready, and Wang Zukong informs them that the competition will last for five days, and thus, they will need to stay there for a few nights. Wang Ling does not still want to go with them to the competition, as he thinks of different ways to exclude himself from the team. Their bus arrives and they all get on board, but at that moment, something unexpected comes up, and Master Zhuo informs them that he won't be able to go with them anymore. The issue reported to Master Zhuo, which made him unable to go with the team to Faction 59, was that the leader of the Shadow Faction was caught and tied up at a safe house. He heads there immediately, and as he enters the room and raises her head with his fingers, he notices that the Lady in Chains isn't the leader of the Shadow Faction, but a bomb that she had planned to explode instantly when touched. However, Sun Rong is the primary target of the Shadow Faction's leader and she vows to take Sun Rong down by herself. The bus arrives at Faction 59, and the team comes down from it. Ms. Pan cites Ms. Ji, and there is a burst of energy interchange between them. They both used to be close friends and roommates, but now they are rivals, as Ms. Pan Shengtong is part of the Faction 60 team, while Ms. Tai is of the Faction 59 team. The Faction 59 team, who were waiting to receive the team from Faction 60, exchanged pleasantries with the visiting team. The pleasantries don't go as planned as Ms. Pan and a member of the opponent team get into it as they exchange words with each other, both talking about Sun Rong's choice of school. More unhealthy conversations ensue between both teams as they battle each other verbally. Wang Ling still has plans to exclude himself from the team, and he plans to pretend to have a stomachache. He is still waiting for the right moment to make the move, but just then, Ms. Ji, who has been in trouble since they arrived, is at it again, and this time, she strikes Wang Ling, but says it is just a grand testing trick to find out one's force value. The strike does no harm to Wang Ling, but he seizes the opportunity he has been Ling waiting for, and he falls to the ground, pretending to be in pain. His team gathers around him and tries to find out the cause of his pain. A few yards away, the leader of the Shadow Faction arrives and watches on from her car, as she orders her driver to follow the team's bus, right from when they are about to leave for Faction 59. Suddenly, Wang Ling's amulet breaks loose and there is a burst of energy that comes out of him. At the moment, nobody knows the energy's source or where it is coming from. The energy is the resonance of the Peachwood Sword, which stimulated Wang Ling's counterfeit amulet. His spiritual force is now released and is so powerful that he will need to take a low power pill as soon as possible, so that he does not become unstable. Still, no one knows the real cause of the energy blast as they question Miss Tsi about the grand testing trick she mentioned earlier. They think she did more than just test his force value. There are accusing states pinned all over her, and she responds to their question by saying that the student, Wang Ling, is good at acting. Sun Rong is furious and demands to know why Ms. Chi would ask such a ridiculous question. Tang Jingzi is then questioned by Ms. Chi if he has anything to do with it, but he repeatedly shakes his head and wonders if the fifth member of the Faction 59's team is responsible for it. Wang Ling is still on the ground as he pretends to be unconscious. The Shadow Faction leader receives a report from her men that they failed to accomplish her mission, but then she says that she has a different plan already as she asks her driver to retreat from the scene. Wang Ling's plan to get himself excluded from the team seems to be working as he still lies on the ground, hoping for the best. Wang Ling is put on a stretcher and taken inside the building. Tang Jingzi doesn't take his eyes off him and still wonders if the fifth member of his team has a hand in the incident as the spiritual force shock was terrible. As Wang Ling is taken inside, Sun Rong makes her way inside the building as well, but then Tang Jingzi stops her and introduces himself as the chairman of Faction 59's student union, also reminding her that they both attended the same school, the Cultivation Cram School, and asks if she still remembers him. She asks him to move from her way but he does not, and then she rages and attempts throwing a punch at him, but it is blocked by another female whom Tang Jingzi introduces as the secretary of the Faction 59's student union, Yisha Bei. Some sort of magical fire catches the stretcher carrying Wang Ling, 
And again, no one knows how it happened, or where it came from. Wang Ling is rushed to the medical room. The turn of events annoys Sun Rong even more, and she draws her sword and takes a swipe at Tang Jingze. But Wang Zukang stops her sword just before it strikes Tang. He then asks her as well as everyone else there to remain calm and to use their swords only when it is time for the competition. Pan calls out to Miss Chi and asks her to properly manage her students as they were all beginning to cause a lot of trouble already. Tang Jingzi suspects the fifth team member as the man responsible for the magical fire. He is a bit concerned, but finally decides that it is a good thing as one of the competitors has been taken down. In the medical room, Wang Ling who is all wrapped up is put on a platform, but the doctor unwraps to find out that there is no Wang Ling underneath. He has sneaked out through other means, and he immediately calls his dad, informing him that his seal is broken, and that he is at Faction 59. Wang Ling adds that he would find a means to sneak out of the building and wait for him. Wang's dad does not hesitate, as he immediately heads straight to get his son to deliver a new amulet to him before the old one breaks. The Faction 60 team visits the gym at Faction 59, and they all marvel over its size. At the gym, the rules for the National Senior Phase Sword competition are given out to them by Ms. Chi as she informs them about everything they would need to know before the competition commences. She explains that the competition would be on a 5-on-5 five -five basis and that there are 5 altars on the field metal, wood, fire, water, and earth. She adds that when one inserts their sword into an altar, it will begin to accumulate the wielder's score, explaining further that the more altars occupied, the faster the scores accumulate, and the team who gets to 100% first wins it. Guo Hao notes that the rules are like that of the video game, capture the flag. As Miss Tsi continues with the rules, she informs them that the competition was initially supposed to be held at Faction 60, but was changed because of the attack days ago. She then tells them that in the exteriors of the gym they were in is the competition ground. She mockingly adds that the place is very big and that she hopes they will all get used to it. Wang Ling is still wandering about the building trying to figure out a means to sneak out. Outside, the two teams face each other and Tang Jingzhe steps up and says that Faction 60 cannot participate in the competition, as they have just four team members instead of five. But Guo Hao also notices that there are only four Faction 59 team members and he draws Tang's attention to it, and at that moment, the fifth man, via a water wave, joins the butt. Instead of taking his position with the Faction 59 team, he goes straight to Sun Rong and presents a flower to her saying that he would fight on Faction 60's side if she accepts the flowers. Z is furious and demands to know why Tang Jingze would bring such a man to their team. Soon Rong rejects his flowers and just then, a fight ensues between the fifth member, He Bu Feng, and Chen Chao, who orders him to take his hands off Soon Rong. Chen Chao gets really beaten by Bu Feng, but does not give up and goes again. This time, he gets knocked off hard and is sent flying with his arm cut off but Wang Ling appears just in time, catches him, and restores his arm. Wang Ling receives a call from his dad, who is outside the building with his amulet, but tells him that he can't meet him at the moment. Bu Feng is surprised by what he just saw, and figures out instantly that Wang Ling possesses so much power, but he is even more stunned that he cannot sense any spiritual force in him. After a brief thought, he decides to find out for himself, and goes flying at Wang Ling, catching him in the jaw, but Wang Ling only feels his jaw for a brief moment, and walks away from Bu Feng, like nothing happened. Sun Rong runs up to him asking if he is okay. He responds by presenting a flower to her, and Bu Feng is even more confused. As the competitors are now complete, an announcement comes in that they should all head to their various preparation rooms. The shadow faction leader trails Wang Ling as she discovers that he is alone, and as she plans to strike, she is spotted by Bu Feng, and he demands to know her mission there, which she lies about. He further adds that he wants her to be his girlfriend, but as she says no, he reveals that he knows her, and they get into an intense fight, but get brutally beaten by the dangerous lady. The leader of the Shadow Faction, Zhang Liu Ying, has Bu Feng and Wang Ling in her immortal binding ropes. Bu Feng keeps wriggling and struggles to break free, but Wang Ling remains just as calm. Zhang's reason for making Wang Ling her target is the fact that Sun Rong cared so much about him when the incident at 59 Faction Gate happened. She believes Wang Ling does not possess much power, as Ms. Si had said, he has a force value of just 5. Zhang disguises as Bu Feng and heads to the conference room where all the competitors sit and discuss. She says to them that Wang Ling has been kidnapped and explains how it happened. Meanwhile, Jiang's driver who watches over Wang Ling and Bu Feng is drinking from a bottle as he tells Bu Feng not to panic as he is not the target and that when Sun Rong is killed, he will be allowed to go. Bu Feng tries to outsmart him by saying he will join the Shadow Faction if Jiang's driver unties him, 
which does not happen as he says to Bu Feng that only his boss possesses the power over the immortal binding ropes. Wang Ling, from where he is tied, observes that the driver also has some spiritual force in him that he does not want to show off. Back at the conference room, they all continue to listen as Jiang, who is disguised as Bu Feng, continues her story about Wang Ling being kidnapped. As she goes on, Sun Rong gets triggered and decides she is not going to sit around but will go searching for Wang Ling. The other members of the team of Faction 60 also agree as they take out their weapons and get ready. Master Zhuo is also there with them, and through the description of the person, he figures out that it is Jiang, the leader of the Shadow Force, who is at it again. Sun Rong and her team go out for the search, and then Ms. Z orders her team to observe their performance in a real battle, but should not get themselves involved unless it is very necessary. Outside where Bu Feng and Wang Ling are tied, the driver dances to music coming from his music player, and while he is distracted by the dancing, Bu Feng calls out to Wang Ling saying he knows that he has got a lot of powers, reminding him of the moment where he healed the arm of the guy he cut off, but as he talked, Wang Ling was already asleep and snoring, and he was disappointed. Wang is very relaxed because he never wanted to take part in the competition, and as he is tied to a frame, his aim would be achieved with ease. Jiang's driver has stopped dancing and turned the music off, saying it is time for him to do his job, but at that moment, Bu Feng begins screaming for help. Sun Rong, her team, and other guards sight Wang Ling from afar as he is raised higher on the platform where he hung from while Bu Feng remains on the ground. They all run towards Wang Ling with Jiang also running towards them still in her disguise. Tang Jingzhe and his team stand further back on a higher level, observing like they were told to. They notice that Bu Feng looks quite strange, but they still don't know that it is the Shadow Faction leader, Jiang Lo. As they fly towards the location of Wang Ling and Bu Feng, Zhang's driver sees them and begins firing wolf fairies at them. They are alert, but some of them still get hit by flying objects. He casts a few other dangerous spells but Sun Rong stands up to it and uses her sword to destroy his spells which hang in the sky. But these were all that played in Wang Ling's mind and reality. Master Zhuo easily pounced on the driver and everything was under control. Zhuo is interviewed afterwards and he says the suspect is the spiritual infant killed by idol beauty more than a hundred years back but his soul was contained in the body of a dying old man. No one has been able to figure out who Bu Feng Zhang is just yet, and as for the real Bu Feng, Wang Ling hid him somewhere as he thought of another plan to help him save the lives of millions of people. Jiang watches on with anger as her plans do not work out well, and Tang Jingze notices the mood and asks to know why. Wang Ling hoped that as Bu Feng was not there anymore, the competition would be cancelled, then he would be able to head away, so he doesn't cause any disaster. Meanwhile, his dad is still not allowed to enter the faction buildings. Unfortunately for Wang Ling, the competition is still being held because the fake of Bufeng Jiang made herself available for it. Zhang figured out Wang Ling's plan and is all out to put it in a state of jeopardy at all costs. At the arena, the host welcomes everyone to the event as the competitors all stand facing the spectators in the arena. The host once again explains the rules of the competition to them, which includes not flying on swords or using any flying skills. He also adds that the battle area is covered with a special restoring field, which would make sure their cultivation is not lost, even if they are injured during the competition. He then declares the competition open, and cheers are coming from every direction. Xiu Bei is analyzing and trying to get the data of all the spiritual forces of all their rivals. There are cheers everywhere as the competitors begin to enter the battleground one by one, and as it is almost Wang Ling's turn, he hears a voice calling his name. It is his father who is finally able to get access to the building, and he runs towards his son with the new amulet. He doesn't get there on time, but then Ms. Pan notices and walks up to meet him. In the middle of a deserted area, the group from Faction 59 has been able to hack into the system. They use Zhao Bei's ability to learn the coordinates and pinpoint the location of Group 6 and teleport into the system. They look for Hei Bu Feng, but transmission to him fails. A member explains that this means anyone who meets Hei Bu Feng needs to be careful. Xiao Bei tells the rest, the coordinates of Rong landed in the north, close to the Altar of Water. The dog who is the Demon King in disguise landed in the south, near the Altar of Fire. Chao is in the west, near the Altar of Metal, who are in different areas separated. The dog aka the Demon King is alone when Hei Bu Feng appears behind him. One of the faction's members, Liang Fei, asks for the weakest member of Wang's group. They believe it's Wang who is the weakest because his power is being suppressed, and Wang's spirit is reading close to zero. They are unable to trace him but the leader, Jingze, suspects he is in the east, 
close to the altar of wood. One of the group members, Fei, runs to go fight Wang. Guo hides at the center but his clone is easily found and dealt with by the group leader. Guo then follows Fei of group 59, who is running to attack Wang. At the west, Chao runs to the altar. As he gets closer he starts to get cuts on his face but is unaware of the cause. Leaves blow past him, and the altar is beneath a tree. The announcer tells everyone that Faction 59 is in the lead, they've been able to capture one altar. Chao reaches the altar of metal underneath the tree, removes his jacket, and then begins to ponder how he will activate the altar for his faction. A lady from behind tells him the instruction, she says, insert your sword into the socket, then wait for 10 seconds afterward, the seizing will be completed. Chao thanks her for the aid, then he turns to see a female member of group 59. Xiao Bei, she asks Chao about how he is feeling, and then goes on to tell him that this current altar is hers for the taking. Chao laughs to himself, and then tells Xiao Bei that his family has a motto that forbids men from fighting women. Chao tells Xiao Bei that, as she reminded him earlier, she is free to make her three moves on him. Xiao Bei puts her hands up like she is about to cast a spell, but surprisingly nothing flashy happens. Then she tells Chao that she is done with her attack. Chao is annoyed he thinks she is mocking him. Then he sees a web-like substance around Xiao Bei. Before long, he loses control of his arms. He starts to punch and beat himself up. Chao is lying on the ground helpless. He smashes his head into the ground and asks Xiao Bei when she sets this trick up. Xiao Bei explains her skill called Web of Dimension, captures prey, and then gives her the ability to control the trapped creature, like a puppet. Then using her magic, she controls the body with her invisible web that goes after people's neurons. In the monitoring room, the teachers see Chao beating up. A female teacher uses tissues to clean her tears because of what she sees Chao's face. Instructor Zhu Kang folds his arms and is lost in thought. Although Chao cannot die from the hits, all the wounds and pain are simulated perfectly on a 1-1 scale. He feels Chen Chao is having a hard time. On the other end, Bu Feng fights the Demon King but the Demon King escapes. He laughs because consuming the attacks of the people he fights is giving him power. At the east Fei finally reaches Wang but finds him sleeping on the ground. He assumes that Wang is dead. Then he makes his way to the altar. Wang remains still till he hears the Demon King exclaims his thoughts from earlier. Wang stands to see Liang at the altar, but before they begin fighting, Guo attacks Fei and they get into a battle. At the north altar, Rong uses her powers to notice her friends are in danger. Someone attacks her from her blind side, but she intercepts the attack. She uses her spirit power, Ocean, to fight against the leader of the faction, Tang Jingze, who has the power of a similar ilk. He easily cuts through Ocean's attacks, the scores are announced, and Faction 59 is leading. Rong changes Ocean to a sword, but she is overwhelmed when she sees Jingzi, who does his freezing attack blowing snow. Rong goes on the attack. She uses various skills but is unable to get the better of Jingze before He Bufeng reaches their location. She does not see a way to win, but she cannot escape. Before He Bufeng attacks, they hear a loud yelp, then the ground beneath breaks into pieces. Bufeng and Jingze are distracted. Rong seizes the opportunity and escapes. But Faction 59 wins that altar and is in the lead. News starts going around that an altar has been seized by Faction 60, and the rest of Group 59 is shocked by this. They wonder what creature must have defeated Fei. As Rong swims through the water, she hears some news on her AirPods that Wang and the Demon King have combined. The announcer exclaims that Wang must be a genius. Rong does not care, though she rushes to go meet Guo. Then on the TV in the instructor's room, they see a dark creature rise from the ground at the Altar of Wood's location. It appears to be a human-dog hybrid with immense power. At the Altar of Wood, wood and debris are scattered everywhere. Guo continues using mouth cannon attacks, but Fei keeps evading and countering the attack. Fei walks, then tells Wang, who all this while has just been seated casually. He tells Wang to sit up and then pushes him to the ground. Guo sees this then he screams at Wang, telling him to make something of himself. This scream sends another attack toward Fei, who has to deflect it. Fei wonders how Guo was able to think up a new phrase for attacking so swiftly. Guo laughs, stretches his arms, then tells Fei that although he may have a limited vocabulary to use on Fei, he has lots of phrases to use on other people. Fei steadies his sword waiting for the onslaught as Wang sits up once more behind him. Guo apologizes to Wang and then starts to shout insults towards him. The Demon King cowers behind the bushes as the words ring out. Guo screams good for nothing, coward, lame ass, unfaithful, you are so fake, stone-hearted, poker face. These words affect Wang, but he has to restrain himself. An emotion inside Wang's aggravation grows within him. The demon runs from behind to bite Wang. He instructs Wang to let him use his dark feelings. 
Wang allows it, and then pours his powers into the Demon King, they combine and become half-dog, half-human creatures. Fei laughs at this form because it seems funny, but immediately Wang just flicks Fei's sword, then it destroys. He casually walks past Fei, pushing him a little, but the force was like a heavy truck, ramming into Fei's left side. Fei flies away into the sky. The female teacher asks to learn how Wang learned to do the human hybrid combination. At the other side, the other students learn of the combined spiritual force of Wang and the Demon King. At the altar of metal, Chao is still incapacitated, while Xiao Bei briefs her group on what is happening. The leader of group 59 proposes a plan of consistent movement to use their numbers as an advantage against group 60 who have fewer members now due to the combination. Wang wakes up Chao then they go on to capture the altar of metal. He is excited to see Wang smiling, and Wang's dad is happy to see his son smiling. For a brief moment group 60 leads, but group 59 takes the lead back. Before Wang can make a plan to use his immense power to destroy the other group, Rong calls Chao and tells him that Guo is with her because he cowardly ran away from a battle with the other group in the Altar of Wood. Jingzhe and Xiaobei overwhelm him and cause him to run. Guo and Chao are about to argue when Rong cuts them off. She tells them that Rong did nothing wrong, as the aim of the match is not to beat their opponents, but to win all the altars. She then informs her team members that she learned that Xiao Bei, also known as Xiao Bei, has an ability that puts their team at a disadvantage. The ability is positioning, which she uses to learn the coordinates of each person in the field. Rong explains that their team also has an advantage, which is the immense power that Wang possesses. This statement makes Wang shy, but only the Demon King notices this. The group thinks of a strategy to defeat Faction 59, and decides to send Chao to get a new altar. Chao is hesitant, but decides to be the key person to aid the group. Wang realizes that he is not the key person to aid the group to win the battle. Afterward, Rong tells the rest that she just did some scouting on the three waterside altars with the help of her water magic. With the aid of her magic, she has realized that Group 59 has put their strongest hand at the Altar of Earth. Therefore, Guo and Rong go after their weakest side, which is the Altar of Fire. Xiaobei notices this, she informs the rest of the team about the situation. The leader feels like the plan does not make sense, since the Altar of Fire is the furthest from the group, they'll even have to pass through the Altar of Earth to reach there. Xiao Bei then tells him that Chao and Rong aren't going via the normal route, but they are using the water channels to reach the altar quickly. Gu and Rong reach the altar in no time. When they arrive Gu takes on Liang Zheng, Gu lies that he is the reason Zheng's brother Fei was kicked away. As they discuss, Hu Feng remembers what Jingzi said about him doing anything he wants but having to listen to Jingzi's order so that his wish can be granted. As he ponders, Wang gets another altar, the one of water. While Liang Zheng is distracted by Go, Rong sneaks in behind him. Zheng rushes to stop her but he seems too far and he turns his back, Gu attacks him from behind. Zheng was told by Jingzhe to do everything he could to defend the Altar of Fire. If he failed, Jingzhe said Zheng would be kicked out of the student union of Faction 59. Elsewhere, Bu Feng is pondering on what to do next. He thinks to himself, then smiles as if he has come up with a plan. Jingzhe also tells him to do anything he can, so as long, Faction 59 will be able to win the battle, it will be accepted. At the Altar of Metal, leaves fall from the tree, then from the distance, Chao watches as Bu Fang walks closer to him. Chao tells Bu that he is sure they will meet again. Bu remains silent. He continuously reminds himself of the words spoken by his leader, I do not care how you do it. But as long as you win and stick to the plan I have set in place, do what you will. Bu smiles in anticipation, he's been free to do as he wishes, and he gets closer to Chao like a predator stalking a trapped prey. Chao steadies himself for the battle ahead, then says, destiny always has its way. Then there's a flashback, a table has been set up, and the people sitting around are the members of Rong's family. Rong stands up to tell her father that she will defend the family's honor. Then the door to the room opens. Jingzhe steps through the door, immediately he and Rong stare at each other with fire in their eyes. Rong and Jingzhe have been rivals for a long time, their families have known each other for generations. Jingzhe's father proposes that the two of them are compatible for marriage, but the kids have other ideas. Right? There they begin to engage in a duel, trying to see who is better at a specific poem. The parents are astounded by the children's ability, but the kids are not concerned they keep on engaging in the competition. It becomes like a battle of wills and wit as the children use words as their weapons. They believe that this fight is for their respective family's honor, and this war has lasted for a thousand years with no clear winner. 
Back to the present, Liang Zheng is running to defend his altar as Rong tries to seize the altar, he slips on a rock, and luckily dodges Go's attack. The attack stops Rong from seizing the altar, she stops midway to block the attack, but it still sends her flying backward. Liang Zheng stands up, he laughs because of his good fortune, he sarcastically thanks Guo for the assistance. Then he says, Guo that he will use this opportunity to avenge his brother. Guo apologizes to Rong for the attack, but Rong remains silent. She looks outside, and there she sees Jingze. Jingze tells Liang Zheng to run. Liang Zheng summons his strength, then uses it to evade and destroy both Guo and Rong's attacks. In the teacher's room, the instructor from Faction 59 jokes that even though Rong is seen as the best member of Faction 60, she is still having a hard time dealing with Liang Zheng. At the battlefield, Rong rushes to insert her sword, but it's intercepted by Jingzi's attack. Then Liang Zheng says everything went just as Jingze planned, but Jingze punches Liang Zheng. Then he says that he planned to win 5 to 0, a complete and overwhelming demolition. He laughs to himself, then says that however, 4 to 1 is not so bad. This conversation surprises Guo, who is lost. Rong tells him that Faction 59 took a risk. They sent each of their members to four altars leaving one completely unprotected. They went as far as sending Xiaobei to the Altar of Water, to observe Wang's every move so that, if he vacated the Altar of Water, to go get the unprotected Altar. Faction 59 could immediately seize the Altar of Water on his departure. With all this set in place, Rong tells Gu that they have to seize this current Altar, while Chao must hold his ground against Bu Fang else, Faction 60 has no hope of winning. Chao keeps evading Bu Fang's attacks. He dodges, and he smiles to himself, remembering what Rong told him, that beating the enemy is not important, but stopping him from being able to insert their sword. Bu is getting frustrated by Chao's antics, and dodging. He calls Chao, a coward. The instructors watch and are surprised by Chao's endurance during the fight, but Zhou feels something is off. He thinks that Bu Fang is not using his full power. At the battle, Bu Fang notices a leaf falling from the tree. He inspects it, and then notices that this leaf is made of metal. He understands now why this location is called the Altar of Metal. He smiles, and then uses his ability to magnetize the metal around him. He absorbs it, then fires it straight at Chao. Chao then remembers his past, and how his father repeatedly hit him, but he was protected. The hits come consistently, but Chao is unyielding. Bu Feng laughs, then asks, Chao, let's see who gives up first. As this was happening, at the Altar of Fire Jingze is getting worried because Bu Feng has been unable to defeat Chao yet. Rong tells Guo to leave this place to her Nagaoni, and she will defend it herself. Guo walks back, then readies himself. Jingze laughs, then reminds Rong that she has always been unable to defeat him in any of their previous battles. Rong pays him no attention, she dives right into it. In the battle, her spirit shocks Jingze. Liang Zheng then asks if he should assist Jingze in the battle, but Jingze asks him not to do so. At the back Guo steadies himself, he has a secret weapon that he can use only once, he prepares himself for the moment he will need to strike. At the altar of metal, Fang passes a fallen Chao, but Chao holds him back, telling him that he should not dare go to the altar. At the altar of fire, Jingze seems to be winning his tussle against Rong. Chao keeps trying, but he is unable to stop Fang, who walks to put in his sword. Then immediately a burst of energy is felt at the altar of fire and metal. Guo uses a secret technique to strengthen his comrades. Immediately, Chao stands up looking stronger than before his arms appear. Be bigger and covered with spirit energy. While Rong becomes strengthened also, she summons her astral spirit, then she smiles. Team 60 uses the power from the energy gotten from Guo's sword to attack Faction 59. The attacks work, and Faction 60 seizes more Altar to the shock of the instructors from Faction 59. As everyone celebrates, Fang removes his clothes and it is revealed that a woman is disgusting. She screams in anger as she leaps toward Chao. At the altar of water, Xiaobei watches Wang as he protects the water. She feels it is okay, and if chooses to go to get another altar, she will quickly seize the water. Altar, Xiaobei feels like her group's victory is in the bag, but then she senses something that shocks her. The announcer says that Faction 60 has seized two altars while 59 has seized just two. The announcer once more announces that Faction 60 has seized four altars to Faction 59's one. This is because of Rong's plan earlier. She told Wang that once the altar has been seized, he should transfer transform into his normal self, without any spiritual energy, and then sneak to the unguarded altar while the demon king should disguise himself and stay in his human form to keep Xiaobei's attention. Xiaobei is shocked, she wonders who sees the altar and if Wang is with her, then she turns to see a human figure with an enormous frog head staring at her. The ugly sight startles her, and she falls to the ground in shock, and begs it to leave her alone. 
the Demon King explains to Xiao Bei that the trap she set is meant for humans, not him, and her web helped him to pinpoint her location. The Demon King starts to lick her with his enormous tongue, shocking and disgusting Xiao Bei. Rong tries to call Chao, but there is no reply. Guo tells her not to worry, that since the Altar of Metal is still in their possession, it probably means Chao has been able to keep Bu Feng at bay. Guo and Rong separate. Guo heads to the Altar of Metal, while Rong heads to the Altar of Earth to aid Wang. Wang's dad wonders whether his son has been able to finally have some semblance of realism, since he was young, Wang has always kept to himself and tried to stay separate from others. He has always been apathetic about life but now because of his friends, he is feeling emotions, and a fire burns in him bit by bit, but Wang does not notice this. At the altar of metal, Chen Chao is restricted to the tree, he is beaten up badly and tied up, Guo sees him and rushes to his friend, while at the altar of water, Xiao Bei has fainted due to constant licking. The Demon King notices that Wang's powers are about to explode because of his emotions, and he rushes to him. Wang is seriously trying to control his powers, the more he restrains himself as the timer counts down the more, his emotions try to spill out like boiling water from a pot. Wang tries to remove his hands but Rong holds his hands, she calms him down, then they switch to the metal altar, there they see to their shock that Chao has been beaten up. Despite the things said in place to ensure safety, it appears that someone powerful has made their way into the competition. At the altar of Earth, Rong tells Wang that he has a wonderful smile. She jokingly warns him never to keep his face still so much again. While they share a moment, the evil woman who pretended to be Bu Feng kills Rong in Wang's front. Everyone in the TV room screams in shock and dismay. Rong's spirit leaves her. It goes to hug Wang, and it tries to talk but does not finish his statement. Rong's death enrages Wang. He goes on a rampage, and his power shatters the amulet which was restricting him. Wang's dad tries to run to aid, but fortunately, the Demon King can use his powers to pause time. But, it is not enough to stop Wang. In a few seconds Wang shatters time and punches the woman away. The woman laughs, she does not know how powerful Wang is. She sends various blasts at him trying to injure Wang, but Wang is too powerful. He easily deflects and destroys her attacks, then he gives the woman another punch. This time, she is knocked unconscious as she flies through the sky. She comes to after another hit, but Wang continues his assault. He takes her through rocks and mountains. The woman is overwhelmed as Wang gives into the darkness. He sends thousands of rocks towards her, then suppresses a blast before he fires at her completely incapacitating her. Wang is taken over by his immense rage. He goes in for the kill but stops himself because of a memory of wrong in his head, he walks away from the woman who screams that he is a coward and begs him to kill her. Wang goes to Rong, and he tries to restore her, but it is not working. The Demon King explains that the evil woman hit Rong with a fatal attack, which severed her soul and spirit apart. Wang feels that she is still breathing and warm, but the Demon King explains that the only reason it seems that way is because his power to pause the flow of time is still active. As soon as he releases his power, Rong will die. Wang tries to think of what to do. He even goes as far as saying he will give up all his spiritual energy just to preserve her life but the Demon King tells him it is impossible. Wong cries. He feels useless and hopeless. He does not want to return to the world without Rong. The Demon King tells him that there are two options. Either Wong remains in this pause timeline, with her still as she is, or Wong returns to reality, with Rong dead. Wong holds her tight and remembers the times they shared. Then he says, he will choose neither. Instead, he will restart the world. Wang chooses to go back in time. To restart the world, he does this to return everything to its original state so he can save Sun Rong. Still, it does not work. Wang is told that Rong's vital spirits have been broken into various pieces and no one can save a life that is lost. The Demon King tells Rong that his grand trick is only capable of fixing physical damage. Wang tries again and again, but no matter how many times he tries the result will always be the same. Wang feels if he discovered and dealt with the evil woman, Zhang Luying sooner, all this could have been avoided. The Demon King tells him that now as time is paused, they can try to think about how to restore Rong. Wang asks the Demon King about his ability, and he explains, this special ability is to convert spiritual force into an accelerating ray, so the spiritual forces within the body can be accelerated to the speed of light. Wang reads into this, he says if they go at a speed beyond that of light, they will be able to return to the past. The Demon King says yes. It is possible theoretically, but it takes a massive amount of spiritual energy. Wang asks, what if he has that tremendous amount of energy? The Demon King combines with Wang once more, then they attempt to go back in time. The Demon King warns him that there could be consequences because they are going against the laws of nature. Wang's able to go back in time, and once he returns things are a bit different now. Wrong does not exist in this timeline. This time Wang is saved by Chao and Guo from the bullies on his first day of school. 
Chao punches one of the bullies, while Guo uses his squirt gun on the other. Chao tries to hand them the money, but it feels off, at the seduction class. Chao is writing seriously about the magic trick, while Wang has a flash memory of Wang. He looks up, but he only sees his other classmates. Wang walks home with Guo and Chao. He sees someone who he thinks he knows, then he pursues the limousine till it reaches a red light. It stops, and the people wind down. Wang looks in, but for some reason, it is not who he expects to see. Later on, he goes to Heaven's Paradise with Guo and Chao, but things still feel off to him. Wang exists in a completely new world. The mixture of Wang's and the Demon King's ability destroys the old world while it keeps on being absorbed by the new one. Underneath the old original world, a little girl is the new monarch of the underworld. She feels the shake from above, but she wonders what is going on up above. Her attendant thinks it might be an earthquake. He tells her not to think much of it. A new dead person is brought to her. It's wrong. Wrong comes to and wonders where she is. As she thinks the demon's leader checks her database to see who Rong truly is, as she scrolls through she finds Rong's name, then realizes that Rong is not meant to be here. The demons come together to try to make Rong believe she is just having a dream, then Rong is sent back upwards to help preserve the life of the old world. When she comes back to life, she sees a boy she does not know. The boy is shocked to see her. In the new world, Wang still feels like something is off, he is in heavenly paradise, and he is meant to be happy but still, there's this feeling of unease and unhappiness that overwhelms him. In the old world Wang's apprentice says that his master created a new world mistakenly, and if he is not awakened soon he will destroy this current world. The boy turns into a sword, then Rong uses it to attack Wang. She tries to destroy the new world but automatically Wang defends himself. She finally gets to him after destroying the new world. As they return, they get back to the moment. The evil woman reveals herself but before she can attack, Wang uses his power to quickly defeat her, and then places the sword for faction 60's win. Afterward, Rong runs to him, and she tries to talk to him, but she is intercepted by paparazzi. The Demon King asks Wang if he is really satisfied with this outcome. Then Wang and Ling see themselves in another place entirely. This is them from the original timeline. Because of Rong's messing up with time things have become chaotic. Because of this, he and Rong are unable to go back in time. Instead they are stuck wandering the end of the world with each other. Rong finds it romantic. The Demon King tells them, there is a way to reverse time but it will not be time travel, but reversing time. Rong will lose all her memory of the current timeline. Rong tells Wang not to worry, because her emotions surpass that of time and space, and she believes that she will find her way to him, one way or the other. Back to the present time, Wang's dad rushes to put the amulet on him, but the Demon King warns that once this is done, Wang's relationship with Rong will become cold, because his emotions will be sealed up. The entire class and instructors of Faction 60 celebrate the win. The mages gather at the site where the evil woman was smashed into the ground to dig her out, while the students of Faction 59 are scolded by their instructor. The world is restored to normal. Wang smiles as he looks at the Demon King. He then tells him that as long as there is world peace, he will be happy. 